Hello there. Today I have two short stories for you. One is by Virginia Woolf and the other is by Franz Kafka. If you are enjoying my content, please like, subscribe, and share to any friends you think might like it also. It really helps my channel to grow. Now let us begin. A Haunted House by Virginia Woolf Whatever hour you woke, there was a door shutting. From room to room they went, hand in hand, lifting here, opening there, making sure a ghostly couple. Here we left it, she said. And he added, oh, but here too. It's upstairs, she murmured. And in the garden, he whispered, quietly. They said, or we shall wake them. But it wasn't that you woke us, oh no. They're looking for it. They're drawing the curtain, one might say, and so read on a page or two. Now they've found it. One would be certain, stopping the pencil on the margin. And then, tired of reading, one might rise and see for oneself the house all empty, the door standing open, only the wood pigeons bubbling with content and the hum of the threshing machine sounding from the farm. What did I come in here for? What did I want to find? My hands were empty. Perhaps it's upstairs then. The apples were in the loft, and so down again, the garden still as ever. Only the book had slipped into the grass. But they had found it in the drawing room, not that one could ever see them. The window panes reflected apples, reflected roses. All the leaves were green in the grass. If they moved in the drawing room, the apple only turned its yellow side. Yet the moment after, if the door was open, spread about the floor, hung up upon the walls, pendant from the ceiling, what? My hands were empty. The shadow of a thrush crossed the carpet. From the deepest wells of silence, the wood pigeon drew its bubble of sound. Safe, 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 the pulse of the house beat softly. The treasure buried, the room. The pulse stopped short. Oh, was that a buried treasure? A moment later, the light had faded. Out in the garden then, with the trees spun darkness for a wandering beam of sun. So fine, so rare, coolly sunk beneath the surface, the beam I sought always burnt behind the glass. Death was the glass, death was between us. Coming to the woman first, hundreds of years ago, leaving the house, sealing all the windows. The rooms were darkened. He left it, left her, went north, went east, saw the stars turned in the southern sky, sought the house, found it dropped beneath the downs, safe, 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 the pulse of the house beat gladly, the treasure is yours. The wind roars up the avenue, trees stoop and bend this way and that, moonbeams splash and spill wildly in the rain, but the beam of the lamp falls straight from the window, the candle burns stiff and still, Wandering through the house, opening the windows, whispering not to wake us. The ghostly couple seek their joy. Here we slept, she says. And he adds, kisses without number. Waking in the morning, silver between the trees, upstairs, in the garden, when summer came. In winter snow time, the doors were shutting far in the distance. Gently knocking like the pulse of a heart. Nearer they come, cease at the doorway. The wind falls, the rain slides silver down the glass. Our eyes darken, we hear no steps beside us. We see no lady spread her ghostly cloak. His hands shield the lantern, look, he breathes. Sound asleep, love upon their lips. Stooping, holding their silver lamp above us, 
Long they look and deeply, long they pause. The wind drives straightly, the flame stoops slightly. Wild beams of moonlight cross both floor and wall, and meeting, stain the faces bent, the faces pondering, the faces that search the sleepers and seek their hidden joy. Safe, safe, safe. The heart of the house beats proudly. Long years, he sighs. Again you found me. Here, she murmurs, sleeping in the garden, reading, laughing, rolling apples in the loft. Here we left our treasure. Stooping, their light lifts the lids upon my eyes. Safe, 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 the pulse of the house beats wildly. Waking, I cry. Oh, is this your buried treasure, the light in the heart? Our next story is Before the Law by Franz Kafka. Translation by Ian Johnston. Before the Law sits a gatekeeper. To this gatekeeper comes a man from the country who asks to gain entry into the law. But the gatekeeper says that he cannot grant him entry at the moment. The man thinks about it and then asks if he will be allowed to come in later on. It is possible, says the gatekeeper, but not now. At the moment, the gate to the law stands open, as always, and the gatekeeper walks to the side. So the man bends over in order to see through the gate into the inside. When the gatekeeper notices that, he laughs and says, If it tempts you so much, try it in spite of my prohibition. But take note, I am powerful. And I am only the most lowly gatekeeper. But from room to room stand the gatekeepers, each more powerful than the other. I can't endure even one glimpse of the third. The man from the country has not expected such difficulties. The law should always be accessible for everyone, he thinks. But as he now looks more closely at the gatekeeper, in his fur coat, at his large pointed nose and his long thin black tartar's beard, he decides that it would be better to wait until he gets permission to go inside. The gatekeeper gives him a stool and allows him to sit down at the side in front of the gate. There he sits for days and years. He makes many attempts to be let in and he wears the gatekeeper out with his requests. The gatekeeper often interrogates him briefly, questioning him about his homeland and many other things. But they are indifferent questions, the kind great men put at the end. He always tells him once more that he cannot let him inside yet. The man who has equipped himself with many things for his journey spends everything, no matter how valuable, to win over the gatekeeper. The latter takes it all, but as he does so, says, I am taking this only so that you do not think you have failed to do anything. During the many years, the man observes the gatekeeper almost continuously. He forgets the other gatekeepers, and this one seems to him, the only obstacle for entry into the law. He curses the unlucky circumstance. In the first years, thoughtlessly, and out loud, later as he grows old, he still mumbles to himself. He becomes childish, and since in the long years studying the gatekeeper, he has come to know the fleas in his fur collar. He even asked the fleas to help him persuade the gatekeeper. Finally, his eyesight grows weak, and he does not know whether things are really darker around him or whether his eyes are merely deceiving him. But he recognizes now in the darkness an illumination which breaks inextinguishably out of the gateway to the law. Now he no longer has much time to live. Before his death, 
he gathers in his head all his experiences of the entire time up into one question, which he has not yet put to the gate gatekeeper. He waves to him, since he can no longer lift up his stiffening body. The gatekeeper has to bend way down to him, where the great difference has changed things to the disadvantage of the man. What do you still want to know, then? asks the gatekeeper. You are insatiable. Everyone strives after the law, says the man. How is it that in these many years no one except me has requested entry? The gatekeeper sees that the man is already dying, and in order to reach his diminishing sense of hearing, he shouts at him. Here no one else can gain entry, since this entrance was assigned only to you. I'm going now to close it.